When the temps drop, their doors open, as do the hearts of all the incredible volunteers in our community. Our special guest today is Lindsay. She oversees the Snohomish and Monroe cold weather shelters, and she has so much love in her heart for people who are unhoused, who need a place to come and get warm. Lindsay, welcome back to Spira 105.3. Good to hear your voice. It's good to hear your voice, too, and I am still just as thankful for you this year as I was last year. We hear you all are opening your doors a little early this season, Lindsay. Yes, we opened early. We actually opened uh, last Friday, the 27th, and we're open for three days before the season started. Is that a big deal to open early? It, it is a big deal, um, but we're ready to go. So it was all about mobilizing volunteers and then just making sure all of our supplies and, and our site was up to, and running. The biggest transition we had from last season is we have a new site in Monroe. So it was just working with that partner to make sure everything was good to go and everyone just stepped up to the plate and we made it happen. I love it. What does it mean to you that volunteers say, yep, here I can help. I've got a warm place to sleep and I want to make sure everybody does. It it just really shows us the heart of the community and, and what's out there. These volunteers really go above and beyond. Most of our volunteers work everyday jobs and maybe work many different shifts to help support this program as well. So they're really incredible people in my book. Oh, well, I believe it. What are you seeing this year on the faces of the people who come in? They need a bed. They need warmth. Is it different than in years past? Because it just seems like so many more people are having a hard time just making ends meet. Yeah, definitely. So their struggles are not getting better. It's hard for a lot of these folks that are experiencing homelessness to continue having to live the way they do because of just housing and not being able to just simply afford a basic way of life around here. So we're really seeing just more people that do have jobs that have steady income but just cannot afford to pay for rent or to get a home in Snohomish County. And so that's what we're seeing. A lot of our guests are so grateful for what we do um, and for the services. And so it's it's really great to see some returning faces because we know that they're still doing okay, but it's still really tough for folks that are out there. I'm certain. When you say services, Lindsay, what kind of services do you provide besides that warm bed? Yeah, so we provide meals. We always make sure that when folks come in for the night to stay that they're given a warm meal. And so definitely food. We have winter wear like gloves and jackets and definitely socks available if they need to restock. We also provide help with laundry. We do, of course, laundry for all of our bedding at the shelter, but we know that guests can come in maybe wet and maybe just really in need of clean clothes that we just don't have on site. So we work with local laundromats to get them connected to that service as well as navigation services. So they're connected with a social worker and the coordinated entry system so they can connect it to to year-round services, not just that night of services. Wow, that's just impressive. Lindsay, do you see a difference in the countenance of somebody who walks in at night feeling, like you said, wet, maybe a little hopeless, and then they wake up in the morning? Do you see a change? We do. You know, there's there's something to be said about a restful night of sleep. So folks leave and they, they leave grateful. Both of our sites, we've been able to extend an extra hour. And so instead of lights coming on at six, they're coming on at seven. And even an hour is just so much more welcoming to our guests to know that they don't have to be rushed out when it's so dark. Mm-hmm. And so we just are really trying to make little little changes to make sure that they have a better experience and can start their next day off at the best foot possible. Little changes add up to big things. If somebody is listening today, Lindsay, and they want to get involved, their heart is just being touched right now. How do they start? Well, we always are needing volunteers. So that could mean um, just setting up the shelter to making meals and delivering them um, to helping getting people up in the morning and serving them coffee. So the first step to any volunteer opportunity is just to go onto our website, just www.voaww.org. And through our volunteer webpage, you'll have many opportunities to choose from. And so it's just a simple process like that. Just go online, um, choose to volunteer and and we'll we'll get volunteers trained up and started volunteering right away. Oh, Lindsay, thanks to you and your team and all of your amazing volunteers for catching the spirit. We so appreciate you. I'm so glad you're there. Thank you, Erica. Thank you for this opportunity.